All right, wonderful people, um, this is PJ coming your way. A new month is birthed again. We are in the month of April, our month of kingdom investment, and I'm focusing on the series that God has laid on my heart. But this week in particular, I'm focusing on faithfulness and on faithfulness. According to Matthew chapter number 25, verse 14 through 30, the master was leaving to a long journey for a long time, and he called three servants and entrusted them with giftings, with talent, with money, with his wealth, and expected something from them. Some were able, were, were remain faithful. Another was not able to pull his part of the bargain. Come with me as we work through this journey and your life can never be the same. Bless you. All right. I came to America in my 20s. I've, I've began. And having done what I'm doing now with the Lord, it's been approximately um, so 20 in my 20s till now, about 24 years. For some of us, clubbing was not part of the journey. That's why I can be boring like that and I'll, I, I keep judging you anytime you go to the club. Drinking was not part of the game. Smoking was not part of the game. Chasing around women was not part of the game. So for some of us, these things may sound very foreign because some way, somehow, that is how, how uh, some, uh, my, my life w turned out to be. I remember my first day I was in America. I went to Walmart with some good friends. The same guy that took me to church, he is nowhere to be found in church. Now, he blames me that when he became an usher, I was part of the people that sabotaged him. And now, he is no longer serving in the house of God. But at the end of the day, how can you take somebody to church and you now, you're nowhere to be found. It's a choice that he made not to go back to church anymore, though he believes in God. I remember when I called Tylenol, where we come from in our part of the world, we say Tylenol. It's somebody with me. But they corrected me. Ah, I'm just, what are you talking about? It's Tylenol, not Tylenol. Keep quiet there. I remember my first fries that I was enjoying at this fast food joint and uh, I, like I would pull the fries and I would, I would squeeze the ketchup and mm, uh, mm, that kind of thing. And I'm like, dude, you're a bush and all of that. Having gone through all of that, Found myself on a campus ministry, started serving as a praise and assistant praise and worship, as a choir member, and an assistant praise and worship leader, praise and worship leader, vice student president of our campus church, then the student president and of the campus church. I want to give you a little bi uh, background of where I'm coming from so that you don't take me lightly. Is that okay? But all these things, it is not because that. I, 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 I knew how to serve God better or I was cuter than the rest of the guys around me. Other people to have their own stories. But one of the things that I've come to find out was that I was just privileged. I was just chosen for all these things. If I had my own way, trust me, I would have also enjoyed the club in some. I would have also enjoyed all the above, but because God had plans for me, he said, no way, I need to catch you early so that you can stay focused on this path. Did I do wrong along the line? Yes, I did. Did I misbehave along the line? Yes, I did. Did it get to some point where I was disobedient? Yes, I did. So wherever that you find yourself in life, you are not alone. But amidst all of this, one of the things that has been proven fact with my life and everybody ahead of me that I've learned from is in the area of kingdom investment. Tell somebody kingdom investment. Don't let anybody deceive you into thinking that when you invest in the kingdom, you are throwing it away because you do not see it. The life that you have. Can you imagine if only you were not praying? Can you imagine if you did not understood the word of God? You would have gone to work with an attitude and it's like with your guard up and you would not cut people any slack. But on this journey, I want to focus today on faithfulness and unfaithfulness. Tell somebody faithfulness and unfaithfulness. Okay, but tell somebody faithfulness and unfaithfulness. Matthew 25, verse 14 through 22. For it is just like a man who was about to take a journey. He called his servants together and trusted them with his possession. To one he gave five, to another he gave two, to another he gave one. Each person according to their own ability. And he went by his journey. 
Now, let's jump to verse 21, chapter 25, 21. His master said to him, well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I'll post you, I'll put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. And he did the same thing with the one that received too. And the last one, he said that you are an unfaithful servant. So you ask yourself, how come somebody was able to remain faithful and another was not able to be faithful? The faithfulness and unfaithfulness. Now, faithfulness is the state of mind, a state of allegiance, steadfastness towards something. I'm not talking about faithfulness in relationship and unfaithfulness in the relationship. This thing is all about it. But furthermore, faithfulness is the firm adherence to anything presented to you in observance of a duty. The whole Matthew 25 talks about faithfulness from the, 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 the ten virgins with five being wise, the five being unwise, and what of you. Now, Jesus loved parables because parables are wise illustrations that are meant to trigger a moral upbringing and to correct some immoralities in the lives of people. I'll say it again. Jesus loved parables because parables were tangible things you can feel. Because people, everybody got something. If you don't have a lot of money, at least you have some money. You have something in your hand. So Jesus always presented storylines to people that when you leave his presence, you can never forget. That's why I love Bible stories because I can never forget. I hope you do not forget this one. Now, the master was leaving and having worked with these three guys, he knew their level of intelligence. He knew their abilities and their capabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, let me fix your mind on this. Oftentimes, we focus more on capabilities, more than abilities. I am capable of doing something, so something needs to be called in order for me to be able to achieve that. But my abilities are given to me by God in his own infinite wisdom, and that is why I can fall asleep, and you can wake me up in the middle of the night that go and lead this prayer line. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I would definitely have a punchline to stand on. I will have a trigger scripture to engage somebody to question somebody's faith and where they are in the realms of the spirit. So don't be so focused on what I am capable of doing. But oftentimes in our lives, the reason why we cannot remain faithful is because we want to chase after things that we are not able to withstand or handle. Each person according to their own abilities. Then the master left them. What well, during Bible study, somebody was saying, God is not fair. So I loved what Lady Abner said this morning. If God was not fair, just imagine the person that he gave one. It was a risk that the master took. Me serving in this capacity, it is a chance that God has taken on me. Is somebody hearing me? It is a chance that God has taken on you. You know why we are so unstable minded to the point that even with the little last thing that comes our way, I'm done. I don't get paid in church. What the heck? I'm not going to sit here for anybody to frustrate me. I was telling my wife the other day that whenever I get a chance again, I will ask people that pray for us because the most abused office that anybody can ever take is in the office of being a pastor. Pastors are abused more than anybody under the planet. You know why? Because we are after souls. We want to bring people to the kingdom of God. But we have gotten to the point where we want to remain zealous to where nobody, no matter what comes our way, because somebody got to hear this message, somebody got some abilities to handle whatever God has placed in their hand, we refuse to give up. But God took a chance on you. The master left them. Two people were able to remain faithful. Instead of focusing on the little that we have, everybody wants to focus on that person that has five. Can we get to the point where we mind our business? Can we mind the business that pays us? Can you let me be? So that I can be me and do me, boo. Can I also leave you alone? 
to flow in the anointing upon your life. Ladies and gentlemen, one young man the other day on our call meeting was saying that when I scream, he said, let me calm down so I can download you well. Listen, 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 people of God. Don't ever be deceived that you don't have enough. And also, don't you ever be deceived that you don't have what it takes. Those two people, they had worked with the master and they had learned so much from the master on how to be content with little. And they saw the master blossom from day to day to day to day. You come to church, how our church used to be is no more, it's not like how our church looks now. The way the power of God is moving in our church now is nothing like when it started in 2005 or whatever. If it was the same, then we are in trouble. You know why other people who are gifted and called have just shown up and everybody is pulling their part of the backing. And I love the fact that the young people are rising up to the occasion. God is up to something, but you've got to be faithful. Can God trust you? I'm sure the master knew that the guy with the one would misbehave. He still took a chance on him. Thinking at least he will learn from the people ahead of him. Do you even learn anything at all when you come to church? Church people are always looking for more blessings. Even when they have not finished with a little blessing that they are already enjoying. Ladies and gentlemen. It is our season of kingdom investment. Don't let this season pass you by. You have a share in, this re- in the returns. Don't let it get to the point where only Kwame and, uh, and few people around him takes the, the blessings. But at the end of the day, timing is of great essence. You may have the right stuff but it may not be the right time to drop it. I'll say it again. Oftentimes, we have the right materials, the right resources, but we invest at the wrongest time. And that's why we are not yielding any results. Even when you have to study, you are praying over studying. I'm not saying I love to pray, but there need to be a balance. But ensure that as you are praying, you are reading. When you do that, even things that you were not able to recollect, the Holy Spirit will help you out on. The master was all about doubling up the little that each one of them had. Are you willing to double up whatever resources you've been given? Truth is without faithfulness, nothing can be pleasing unto God. It doesn't matter. You can be prayerful. You can fast and all of that. But if you don't stay plugged in and live right by God, you'll miss out on it. But having tried all of this, four things that God laid on my heart that even I need to work on. Number one, the other two, the first two, they know how to trust in the master. Tell somebody trust in him. Come on, trust in him. Believe in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. If it's only coming from God, then it's going to be sustained. If it is only coming from God, then it is reliable. You cannot follow something you don't trust. When you trust in your abilities given to you by God, it becomes very easy for you to flourish in the courts of the Almighty and people wonder where you have been, who has been tutoring you, because your trust is in the Lord. Psalm number 125, verse 1 through 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the dwelling place of the Most High, which says, unmoved forever. 
As the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds his people now and forevermore. So the more you put your trust in the Lord, it builds up your faith. It builds up tenacity for you. It endears your heart towards the things of God. So it becomes very difficult for people to sway you, for things to move you, for trials and tribulations to overwhelm you. But that is when he is saying that if you can trust in him, then he will lead you to the rock that is higher than I. Number two, you can only be faithful when you are content. Tell somebody contentment. It is a mental state of satisfaction. We want more, but the little that we have, we do not even appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot master managing little, there is no way you can master managing plenty. We all feel averse. Society has made us to realize that if I have one car, I need to have a backup plan. If I have one house, I need to buy one for investment purposes. So instead of waiting for the timing of God, people fabricate stories and they make up things just so they can acquire these things. Let us be careful. Can we be content? When you are content, it becomes very difficult for you to be unfaithful. Tell somebody content, man. Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your eyes, your life free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. You are scared to be abandoned. You are scared that your money is going to run out. So whatever you are, let me throw it about it. Yes, yes, yes. Just so sparingly. But be very careful. Just because we are saying cast your bread on many waters. There are some waters you don't need to cast your bread on. Can I be honest with you? There are some waters, that's what I see. Ladies and gentlemen, can I challenge you with this? When you make money, make time for yourself and enjoy some. Is somebody hearing me? I'm not saying that don't come and sow. When it's time for sowing, come and sow. But make sure you are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Don't let anybody jinx you or let anybody stimulate you. You don't need stimulation for you to invest in the kingdom of God. Let it come out of your own free will. Is that okay? Number three, obedience. Tell somebody obedience. It's the compliance with an order or a request from a higher authority. Jeremiah 7, 23. This is what I told them. Obey me and I will be your God and you'll be my people. Do everything as I say and all will be well with you. You know why all is not well with us and we are still intentionally doing, putting, doing all these chemicals and gimmicks and all of that, the extra stuff. Instead of obeying something little, we want to look at things from elsewhere. But the, the, then the Lord laid on my heart just in the middle of the night as I was sitting down pondering over his goodness that if you don't obey God, then it means you obey something. So what are you obeying? What is taking your time? Whatever that you obey takes up your time. Stimulates your, your, your emotions. And leads you wherever that it wants to lead you. But who are you obeying? Can you obey God on the little that he had entrusted into your hands? He has given it to you. He didn't say anything because he has given you the tools and the pathway already. Tell somebody be obedient. Be obedient. Now finally the process. Tell somebody the process. These are series of actions needed to accomplish something with a greater end. Nobody wants to go through the process. Can you give me the principles? Well, how did you make it? The person made it from 21 years. Then I woke up this morning. The Lord told me, 20 year olds want to drive Maseratis and they want to drive Maybachs and they are killing themselves. They are getting involved with a lot of things. So some people are into occultism. Some people are doing dubious businesses. Some people are selling drugs. Some people are doing so much because they don't want to go through the process. But the Lord said in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, to everything there is a time and a season, a time for every activity under the heaven. It is my prayer that God will help us to be better Christians and be faithful with whatever that we have. Can we be good at what we have? Keep polishing it. Take your time. See it to be your process. Be obedient. Trust in the Lord. Keep moving with the Lord. And you'll be amazed how far the Lord can take you. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God shine his face upon you. Shout a big amen.